Although it produced quality products at low prices for a growing consumer market, industrialization also disrupted the lives of workers. Since jobs were in factory towns and cities, people moved from the countryside into growing metropolitan areas. The change was often very abrupt for the people who migrated. They lost the slower rhythms of agricultural life to a time clock and subway schedules in an accelerated industrialized world. Additionally, people were cut off from the communities in which they had lived for generations and forced to find new social relations. Or, if they couldn't, to fall into lonely and oftentimes desperate lives. Although jobs were an attraction for the new migrants, there was no guarantee of permanent positions in the new economy. Financial cycles of boom and bust affected urban workers the most. Families were disrupted by unemployment and didn't have farm produce to fall back on, while traditional ideas of masculinity and femininity could be challenged when the male breadwinner was replaced by a spouse or a daughter as the main source of family income. Cities were often unprepared to receive so many people so quickly. Inadequate housing and sanitation and transportation contributed to environmental degradation and to psychological stress. In this illustration of London in the 1840s, Consider the life for people who had grown up on farms but were now living in these conditions with no sign of plant life to be seen. Many intellectuals took up the challenge of rethinking how to make society more just for industrial workers. While the American Revolution had inspired discussion of governments formed by we the people and the French Revolution had spread the idea of legal equality of all citizens under the law, a new understanding of capital and labor seemed to be needed. Workers in the new industries provided all of the labor at low wages and often in dangerous conditions, while often absentee owners and investors reaped all the profits. A number of industrialists, such as Robert Owen, tried to make their factories more humane, embracing the cooperative movement and even improving workers' welfare with schools for their children or social gatherings. However, Many business owners did not see their responsibility to workers extending beyond providing a wage for the work that they did. A German philosopher named Karl Marx criticized the growth of capitalism and industrialism and brought some new tools to economic thinking. Marx saw industrialization as the last stage of human development, a final struggle between two opposites that would create something new. According to Marx, this last battle was between the more numerous workers, whom he called the proletariat, and the industrial capitalists, that he called the bourgeoisie. Marx believed that the proletariat would inevitably defeat the bourgeoisie and seize the factories and create a socialist utopia. After this final battle, Marx predicted a world where either the workers or their government controlled what he called the means of production, the factories and the farms. Instead of religion, workers would develop a class consciousness that would help to extend the worldwide proletariat revolution. Marx imagined a global working class that transcended nations and races and ethnic groups. His vision was for an international dictatorship of the proletariat where all workers would unite regardless of ethnicity or language or religion or any of the identities that had prevented European nations from forming a lasting empire. Karl Marx and his partner, Friedrich Engels, published their ideas in a pamphlet called The Communist Manifesto in February 1848, just as Europe entered that year of attempted revolutions. Since these upheavals did not bring the promised dictatorship of the proletariat, Marx, who then went into exile in London, continued to publish his theories and predictions and organized the first Marxist socialist parties. He died in 1883, by which time various socialist and social democratic parties had participated in elections, but he didn't live to see an actual socialist revolution, which would finally occur in Russia in 1917. We'll get to that in a couple weeks. Even so, by the time of Marx's death, his ideas and other forms of socialism were already motivating labor organizers to form unions in which workers could negotiate for better wages and working conditions with the owners under the threat of striking, which is stopping work at a factory and preventing others from replacing them at the machines. 
we'll look at socialism and communism and their influence on governments and on labor relations in future chapters. But for now, a couple more questions for discussion. Why did many workers find industrial cities so challenging to live in? And then secondly, consider socialism's criticism of capitalism. Is it justified? Are Marx's expectations realistic? Uh, 